Hi, one of the greatest challenges in clinical work is to determine a person's methylation status. Methylation is one of the six most important factors in a person's brain function. And we're learning more about this with our new understandings of, methyl of methylation and of epigenetics. Now, when a patient comes in and you want to determine whether they have normal methylation or are they overmethylated or undermethylated, there are lab tests that are really helpful as well as symptoms and traits that are associated with each one of these forms of methylation. My favorite lab tests are whole blood histamine and the SAMI SAH ratio test. Now people have been trying recently to use popular genetic testing to try to identify using looking at SNPs for the methylation cycle such as MTHFR and, and other SNPs in the cycle to determine whether a person is undermethylated and then more importantly trying to decide whether or not a person should receive methylfolate or methyl B12 or in specific nutrients. And what we find is that this technology, which is very wonderful and already is helping people determine whether they have, for example, a tendency for breast cancer or, it's, it, or, or a tendency for Alzheimer's disease, it's not really quite there yet in identifying a person's methylation status. And the reason is partly because the, the, the genetic studies are focused on undermethylation and at this point fail to evaluate or include overmethylation and SNPs that can cause overmethylation. And really what we have is a tug of war between SNPs that cause undermethylation and SNPs that cause overmethylation. So uh, for now, uh, we do have the capability of accurately determining a person's methylation status, and this is very helpful in management of our patients.